Hi everyone, welcome back for today's class. Um, today I thought I would mix it up a little bit rather than doing um, flowers that we would do this really cute little hedgehog here. Um, so as you can see, it's very loose in style, kind of whimsical on the colors and how they're layered. So I thought that would be something good for a change. Um, so, um, let's see, I'm working on a six by nine. I believe this is like the B paper, which is great for practice. It is hundred percent cotton and I get that on Amazon. So I'm going to be mixing up a gray. And so usually a nice way to easy way to make up a gray is, um, to use your ultramarine blue and then, um, some of your burnt umber and as you can see I've kept it a little more on the brown side so it's a little more taupey uh, so as I mix these um, you'll kind of get that point where you get a nice neutral gray that's kind of in between the two but which I can get to that here like that's a nice gray right there um, if you layer this enough you can make a, a black from it or use your colors with a little higher intensity. Um, I do have a little bit of black right here in this little well area. So when I want a little bit more of an intense black, I'll kind of dip into that. But I try to use black sparingly. Um, so this is a really nice neutral gray. Like I said, I want a little more on the taupey side. So I'm going to bring a little more of that brown into it. So I've taken my watercolor pencil, and I use watercolor pencils, Just this is just a cheap one here by um, Lowell Cornell, and just that way it kind of dissolves away. Um, I've, if you notice, we've got like a basic kind of egg shape here. Um, the key part on this is really kind of that little nose and the eyes. And um, so I've just kind of dotted in where those are gonna go and my basic kind of shape here. So um, I want to start off kind of thin and light. So bring a little more water into that. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of rough in, kind of move that around just to kind of get my basic shape in of what my little hedgehog is going to be. It's kind of very loosely... I don't want to make that paper too wet just because I am going to need to keep layering into it and I want to be able to get some detail. So if I really soak this, I'm not going to be able to achieve that. So look, I've got my little basic shape that's going to kind of come in underneath here. Go ahead and put a couple little sprouts up in there. Um, so if you notice, I've got this little hint of magenta that I have pulled into my gray. And I just want to bring a little hint of that in there. I think it kind of brings that little artistic quality in. Um, so again, I'm just going to kind of tap a little bit of that in here. Just keep it nice and soft. So you notice I've got some white space in there, which is important to help to build that kind of depth. Okay, so I've got that little undertone there. So since I'm not overly um, saturating the paper, I can kind of keep working on it. So I'm going to pick up here that's a little more intense, not quite as um, pastel and thinned out as what I had here. And here's where I want to kind of start building just some little soft so we're going to keep layering these so they'll be stronger as we um, go up and the, the color will have more intensity too. So, and that's kind of the thing with watercolor is realizing that you don't have to go full on. It's um, a layering process that kind of helps to build um, of that texture and builds up. I don't need to go full intensity in the beginning. If I make a mistake, 
it's going to be much easier to kind of camouflage or uh, correct it. Um, so even up here in this little space where his face is, I don't need to fill it all in solid. I'm just I'm going to continue to apply a little bit of that texture. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of establish here where his where his ear is going to go. That one got a little probably wetter than what I wanted it, but that's okay. So you can see already he's starting to take a little bit of shape. So when I'm working, I want to work light to dark. I kind of have my little ground area established. I wasn't worried too much about putting in feet. It's just a much looser um, interpretation of the hedgehog. So again, I can take some of my, my gray here and go ahead and establish kind of where my ground floor area is. And I can even bring in like a little hint of that uh, magenta as well. I didn't do it on that one as much, but I think that's always a fun thing to do. Here, I'm going to kind of use more of the side of the brush and just kind of work a little texture into that as well. All right, and so by doing working on that, that gives a little time for that body to dry. So, what I'll do next is I'll go ahead and kind of establish where um, his nose and eye are going to go. And if you notice here, um, I've got a little white space there for the eye reflection and a little tiny bit here on the nose. If you lose that, you can always put it back in with an opaque white or a gel pen. Um, those are some little tricks that um, are handy. So uh, to make this not as wet, I've blotted out my brush well and I've already have wet my black here. So I can pick up a much stronger um, black that's not as wet because I don't want it to move too much on me. So here where I'm going to kind of um, kind of tap in that eye. And I can go back over it again later and um, I just need to apply that one right there. And then on his little nose, I'm going to come up. Our little dog Lily, she is a, um, a little Maltese and we always think that her little face always kind of reminds us of a little hedgehog. So she's a little hedgehog in dog form. And just kind of tapping that in, not to get too heavy handed with it. So now that I've got that black on my palette, I can come in and bring, I haven't rinsed out my brush. I'm going to bring a little bit of that now into my brown that I've got over here. Okay, and so all I'm going to do is just kind of intensify that up. And so now this part here is going to go on, you know, a little more with a little more strength. And I just want to kind of think about how these little quills are um, kind of growing out. So if you notice, I've got these kind of coming up here at an angle. strengthen this up a little bit. I'm just going to smudge this around. Okay. A little more intensity to his face. And just kind of soften that coming down here. Okay, I'll bring some of this coming up here. Kind of some little 
this little visor. I don't know if that's a proper term. That's what we call it on our dogs. And I'm going to start to taper these back. And I can go over this once more and even make these a little stronger, like um, bring a little stronger black into it even. Okay, so I like to bring a few that kind of come out and extend from his body. Okay, rather than keeping it all tight in. Um, I picked up a little water there. I'm well, keeping that like tight in his, um, in that, don't, I want to mess it up a little bit so it looks a little more natural. Okay, a little more black. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of keep layering some of these in. Okay, bring a little more. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I pick up that color I'm going to blot out the belly of my brush just a little bit so it's not quite as wet. I'm going to layer in some of these darker ones again in here. Okay. Bring a couple of detailed ones down into here. Yeah. Contrast up in here in his visor. And you can really kind of, you know, fidget with this as, as much as you want. Um, I would say sometimes that key is not to overwork something too much. get enough contrast and what I want to have my final piece look like. So when I do a piece like this, I'm not worried about creating an exact duplicate of that. Um, you know, I, I, I like when I get to paint and I have that opportunity to kind of interpret as I go along like, oh, okay, this would look cute here and just leaving that openness to be creative uh, even though you know I've done this before that's the thing that you learn a lot um, once you've painted something once you kind of have that chance now to come back and do it again and change something about it and say what can I learn through this you know I am um, Uh, you know, that kind of looser, organic style kind of appeals to me, and that's usually what I go for, too, in my, um, my artwork, my other artwork that I do. But to me, watercolor is just fun, relaxing, um, playful. You'll hear me say that word a lot. Okay, so I'm going to bring just a little bit more. Again, let me blot this out just a little bit. So... And when I use that side of the brush, you know, I can kind of come in here and kind of bring a little more texture into kind of and I think what I'm going to do here too, um, where my um, magenta has had a little moment to kind of dry on here. Again, I'm going to blot my brush out real well. Just pick up a little bit of soft. I think I want to come in and just intensify that a little bit. You know, sometimes when your colors dry, they, they do dry a little bit lighter. And I just, I like how that magenta kind of pops through. So, and I'm going to move it around to keep it nice and soft. You see, my paper's dry enough that I'm not disturbing or messing up what I have already put down. I just 
So I like that little kind of pink showing through. So artwork to me is not always about doing something that's perfect, but doing something that has um, visual interest, um, something that has balance to it. I'm gonna bring a little bit up in here too. There you go. Um, so I'll come like a last little final time, get my brush nice and dry. I'll pick up some of this here that's drier. When you're doing watercolor, you do want a brush that holds a nice tip. Um, I prefer to, a lot of people like a very soft brush. Um, I've always painted with acrylics much longer than I've done watercolor. And I would say I tend to like a little stiffer brush. Um, one that's got a little more bounce to it. That's just my preference. Um, I feel I've got a little better control than the soft brush. So when your brush is starting to get a little dry, you can see here it, it does want to separate a little bit, but I don't want my brush too wet that it comes and it's, um, you know, that it's getting soupy on me. So I just want to place this nice and controlled in here. intensify that a little. Okay, I'm gonna try to see if there's anywhere else that I, I want a little bit of water now. I'll bring in a little more here, a little depth to his face. And a few more little Fine little wispies coming down. Okay. All right, and then my last thing, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little splattering at the top. So I brought a little bit of that magenta up in there. So I get that kind of soupy. Mm, I might need a little bit more magenta to make it not so gray. So quick little easy hedgehog there, and I hope you uh, get a chance to try this out for yourself and practice it a few times. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my content. Thank you.